Today we are going to download Backtrack and we are going to try to eliminate the basic reasons why you have problems installing it on your computer. We will be looking at the download options, then downloading Backtrack, checking the MD5 checksum to see if the file downloaded correctly and then burning the ISO to a disk. You might be able to download Backtrack from many different places on the internet, but why not download it directly from the Backtrack official website? That should eliminate one problem already. The webpage URL that we want is uh, www.backtrack-linux.org. Here we want uh, downloads and you do not have to register as the website says it's uh, optional but registering and getting into the Backtrack community is not such a bad thing they have a great forum, wikis and how-to manuals for now we'll click on download and not register here we have some options that we need to take under consideration we want the Backtrack 5 R1 release. R stands for release. It will have bug fixes, package updates, and new tools and scripts. Then we have a choice between GNOME and uh, KDE. If you are new to Linux, they are both uh, desktop managers, like a graphic interface as uh, Windows. There are differences between GNOME and KDE, but for now, let's just say that they do the same things in different ways some people prefer GNOME and others prefer KDE we are going to use KDE now that said I have no personal preference now we have the architecture we have 32-bit or 64-bit the 32-bit systems have been mainstream for years therefore most software and operating system code has been 32-bit compatible and much of the software today is still 32-bit but the processors have become 64-bit to run a 64-bit application you need a 64-bit OS operating system and a 64-bit processor Backtrack is an OS and not an application so to run a 64-bit Backtrack you need a 64-bit processor a 32-bit Backtrack will run on a 32-bit or 64-bit processor when I say backtrack, I do mean OS. I'm calling it 32-bit backtrack here purely for simplification. Now, a 64-bit backtrack or OS will not run on a 32-bit processor. So let's eliminate this as a problem. So what does your computer have? A 32-bit or a 64-bit system? You need to know. There are probably different ways to find out, but on Linux, I do believe you can type arch, A-R-C-H, in the terminal window to find out. In Windows, start control panel and uh, system only tells you what Windows is running. 32-bit operating system. You could be running a 32-bit Windows on a 64-bit machine so that's not the right way to do it go in on start all programs accessories system tools and system information here on the right hand side you have system type x86 equals a 32-bit system if it said x64 it's a 64-bit system so this computer is a 32-bit but the computer I'm going to be using for backtrack is 64-bit so let's choose 64 as uh, our architecture now we have an um, image here we only have ISO to choose but if we had chosen a GNOME instead of a KDE we would also have VMware I'm not going to say too much about the VMware option. It's uh, about virtualization and it has its benefits. You can run Backtrack from uh, your Windows. I wouldn't say that it's uh, complicated, but you do have to install VMware to, and uh, set it up. There are a lot of good guides on how to do this install. So we are going to install uh, using ISO. 
in my opinion it's uh, easier but when you get a hang of things do try the VMware option now um, ISO is a disk image raw data and it can easily be burned to a CD DVD and BD and that's what we want so when we download this file it will become an ISO now we have the option of direct download or torrent download torrents are easier on bandwidth because they are peer-to-peer -peer. this means you are downloading from other people who are sharing and downloading the same file direct downloads are downloads straight from the servers now uh, tell me if I'm wrong here but I think that each part of the file you receive using torrent is verified via SHA or MD5 during download so that you can be sure your file is not corrupted we are going to do that later on so for now we are going to choose a direct download now there is one more thing we need from this page that is the MD5 this you want to copy it's very important this is one of the main reasons why your backtrack will not install or installs but not correctly so let's click on uh, download and save on file download and we'll put, place it in uh, downloads save as type ISO file save now MD5 has been widely used for a software download to provide some um, assurance that a transferred file has arrived intact and file servers often provide a pre-computed MD5 checksum for the files so that the users can compare the checksum of the downloaded file to it this download has actually taken a very long time around uh, 40 minutes and they do say that uh, torrent downloads are faster than uh, direct downloads it could also be my internet connection not being the best at this time and the download is complete okay let's uh, open the folder and see if the file is there and here we have it before I forget when you download backtrack do not use a download manager that also eliminates a possible problem now we are going to check to see if our MD5 checksum is correct there are many programs on the internet that you can download and that will calculate this for you I have downloaded the hash calc from Slavasoft I'm not saying it's the best program out there but it suits my purpose and this is hash calc now on the data area here we go and browse and on downloads we go to our backtrack ISO open it and we can take off uh, ripe and uh, CRC here and we have MD5 marked and then we calculate and here is our MD5 now let's go into notepad and this is what we copied from uh, the website and we have to check to see that these strings match they do match but if they didn't then you would have to download again because that would be an indication that your ISO is corrupt all we have left to do is write the ISO image to disk and there are plenty of programs you can download from the internet to do this not all programs let you decide the burning speed so choose wisely because you want to burn your CD DVD at a low speed 
I downloaded Express Burn Disk Burning Software and uh, on the burner here we choose write ISO image to a disk and we choose backtrack open and here we have write speed I'm not going to get into a discussion on burn speeds but I advise you to burn at a low speed and as far as I remember so does uh, the backtrack website higher speeds have a tendency to cause problems with your CD DVD and as a last advice use quality CDs and DVDs so we will change the max here and put it at uh, 4 and then burn I uh, hope this tutorial eliminates some of the basic problems when it comes to installing Backtrack and uh, good luck and I'll uh, try to cover other issues in uh, later tutorials